One of the things that can catch new traders out is the spread in stocks. And what this is, is the difference between the buy and the ask in percentage terms. And I remember when I was new and I bought 500 pounds worth of a stock which had a 20% spread. And so I was down 100 pounds instantly just by buying the stock. So this is a danger of the spread and something that you do need to be aware of. So in this video, I'm going to explain what the spread is and how you can get around it and use it to your own advantage. So let's get started. Welcome everybody, Michael Taylor here with the Shifting Shares channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Please don't forget to hit the red button below to subscribe. This will mean that you won't miss out on any future videos. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a full-time trader of my own private capital in the UK stock market. And in this channel, we're going to be covering everything trading UK stocks and some opportunities to make some money as well. So to understand the spread, it is essentially the slight difference between the buy price and the ask price. So let's say, for example, we've got buyers who are willing to buy at 18 pence and we've got sellers who are willing to sell at 20 pence. The difference there is the two pence spread um, because obviously if we had uh, buyers at 19 and we had sellers at 19, then we'd have no spread because those sellers and buyers would be matched. So for there to be no spread, we'd have to have buyers and sellers continuously matching all day throughout the whole trading day. And even on stocks like Vodafone, uh, which are huge and in the FTSE 100, there is a 0.2% of a spread. There's just a couple of pence in it. Um, but yeah, this spread will move up and around throughout the day as the stock fluctuates. One of the things worth knowing about the spread is that the, more, the, the bigger the stock, the more liquid it usually is. And the more liquid that the stock is, uh, the tighter the spread gets. So this is important for traders because first of all, we actually need to cross the spread to make a profit. So again, in a different example, let's say we buy a stock for 50 pence, um, but the spread is 5p. Uh, we actually need to make that 5p just to break even. So that would be a 10% spread. So it is worth looking at if you are going to buy a stock, uh, look at the spread, look at the difference between the bid and the ask, because that is what you actually have to beat, plus commissions as well, before you're even making any profit on a trade. So on sets, we have the spread is automatically set by the order book. So we've got the bids and the asks, as we saw in my level two video. Um, so the spread can be set by individual people, people like you and I who place our orders onto the book and we can tighten the spread if we want to be competitive and go top bidder or top seller. Now on sets QX stocks on the market maker shares, and the spread is essentially their reward for the risk that they take by providing liquidity to us. So in a sense, they shift um, that they take that risk so that they can provide liquidity. So for example, if we want to sell, a market maker will buy our stock from us, um, but then they want to make money on that. So they'll then try and sell it to someone else who would buy from them. So if there's a spread of 32 pence to 33 pence, the market makers will buy from us at 32 pence, they'll sell it to somebody else at 33 pence, and that one pence, the spread, is, is their reward for doing that trade. Now, obviously, the more liquid a stock is, the more risky it is to them, so the wider the spread, because let's say the stock only trades a couple of thousand shares a day, they don't really want to be holding huge amounts in that stock because if it's a liquid, people aren't really bothered. Um, so because they're doing less business, they'll want a higher, higher reward in turn. Now, as the stock gets more and more activity, uh, there's a lot more turns to be made. Uh, so the spread naturally becomes narrower because the market makers are jumping over each other in order to get the turn. So finally, just be aware of the spread before you actually buy or sell a stock, because as I say, if the stock has a 20% spread, as it did when I bought, when I was first new, uh, I was down instantly 20% because I had to make the spread 
just to break even. Um, so one thing as well to be aware of is that a lot of these commission-free trading apps, um, yeah, you might pay nothing to deal on them, um, but they won't actually deal inside the spread. Um, so for example, if you use someone with an RSP service and the spread is 15 to 20, you might get some market makers who will buy at 16.5 from you and they'll sell to somebody else at 18.5. Uh, so the spread might only be two pence if you request quotes online, but the advertised spread on level two is five pence. And if you deal with these commission-free apps, then you'll pay the full spread, you'd pay the five pence, um, and yeah, it's commission-free, but sometimes if you pay some commission, you get much better prices. Um, so this is definitely something to be aware of because yeah, it's not always what it seems. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, I've been stung by it before, and yeah, I, I would hate for new people to get stung by that as well. Trading is hard enough, um, but you do need a, a proper broker to actually get things done for you because yeah these apps are they're not really uh useful unless you're trading something like vodafone which has a uh you know 20 bips spread and as i say with direct market access you can actually compete in the spread yourself um so one of the things that i've done before is when i've seen a stock that's range trading uh, so for example there was one that would constantly hit 600 on the bid and then it would sell, uh, people would, would uh, buy it at 6.30, 6.40, 6.50, 6.60. Um, so what I would do is I would place my order onto the bid at 600. I would be the top bidder at 600. Then as soon as I was filled, I would put it onto the book at 6.30, 6.40 and sell it straight away. So in a sense, I was a market maker in that stock because I was buying from other people and I was instantly making the spread by putting it onto the ask um, and people were buying it from me. So yeah, there are always opportunities with that stock and with stocks like that. And there's no guarantee that if I'd have bought at 600, it then would have gone to 550. Uh, so if I was just looking for a quick turn, there's always risk involved in, in trades like this as there is with, with all trades. Um, but if you can find a range bound stock and you can buy it at the bid and sell it at the ask and repeat it. Uh, sometimes that is a good, good trade to be made. Please let me know in the comments if you found this helpful or you have any questions about the spread or any stories of your own where you've, you've made a market like that. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.